Friends, we thank you so much for joining us here at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Charlotte for worship on this Pentecost Sunday. The word Pentecost comes from a Greek word meaning 50th. The Jewish festival of Pentecost, meaning weeks in Hebrew, falls on the 50th day after the original Passover. On that day, God gave the Torah to Moses on Mount Sinai. And the Christian festival of Pentecost falls on the 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus. On Pentecost Sunday, we remember the day the disciples received the Holy Spirit in a very special way. The story in Acts 2 describes a powerful wind and tongues of fire as the Holy Spirit was poured out on people from all over the world who came to Jerusalem to celebrate a Jewish feast. At the first Pentecost, over 3,000 people were baptized, creating the first church. That is why Pentecost is known as the birthday of the Christian church. Pentecost for Christian culminates the celebration and work of the church begun on Easter Day. In early Christianity, Easter Day was the primary day for baptisms. The newly baptized were then trained in basic Christian doctrine, including the meaning of the sacraments they had now experienced as they prepared to take up their ministries in the life of the church. On Pentecost, Christians celebrate the commissioning of new members into ministry a revitalization of the call to be present with our prayers, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Friends, on this day of celebration, it is our privilege to welcome the Reverend Dr. Heidi Miller as our preacher. Dr. Miller is currently on the faculty of Pfeiffer University and serves as its director of the Masters of Arts in Practical Theology. Heidi is a licensed minister of the Virginia Mennonite Conference and her husband, Gary, serves as pastor at Bogers Chapel United Methodist Church in Concord. Through Dr. Miller's teaching and scholarship in ministry, she focuses on bridge building between academia and the church and the church and the world. Heidi is also a strong advocate for the equipping of laity to serve their home, their church, their family, their neighborhood, and their world. And we are most grateful that she is able to be with us this morning and offer us good news. I also invite you to check out the weekly chatter and learn more about a spiritual formation opportunity for the summer. Beginning June 1st, tomorrow, you are invited to join our United Methodist sisters and brothers around the country and globe and spend summer in the scriptures. It's a simple program. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have a total of 89 chapters. And over the 90-ish days of June, July, and August, you were invited to take up the challenge of reading a chapter a day. Beginning Tuesday, June 9th, we will have a weekly local online conversation about what we're reading. And there will also be other resources from via Facebook. Again, check out the weekly chatter and our church's website for more information. So friends, as we gather on this Sunday, I'm remembered that this is a day for playing with fire for opening the windows and letting the wind of the spirit blow through. Well, maybe not literally, our trustees might get a little nervous. Writer Annie Dillard attempted to capture something of this power in her famous quote about worship, in teaching a stone to talk. Annie Dillard offers us this. Why do people in a church off seem like cheerful tourists on a package tour of the absolute? Does anyone have the foggiest idea what sort of power we blithely invoked? Or as I suspect, does no one believe a word of it? Churches are children playing on the floor with their chemistry sets, mixing up a batch of TNT to kill a Sunday morning. It is madness to wear ladies' straw hats and velvet hats to church. We should all be wearing crash helmets. Ushers should issue life preservers and signal flares. They should lash us to our pews for the sleeping God, friends, may wake someday and take offense. Or the waking God may draw us to where we can never return. So friends, the question for us is how can we capture an experience of the same power that captured the church on that Pentecost Sunday that we read of in Acts 2? And another question is, are we ready for it? because that is what happened on that Pentecost day. 
there was life given, life poured out, life shared in that Pentecost moment that caught everyone by surprise. And as we gather today, may we corporately and individually look to become something new, something bold, and something brave. For friends, that same spirit that was alive and well and birthed the church is still alive today. So friends, I invite you, are you bold enough to pray with me this morning? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolation. This prayer we offer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's children said, Amen. Worship will continue to be offered on Sundays at 10 a.m. and at 1 o'clock for cross-cultural ministry. Small group ministry is also available through the week. 
with, with such as Bible study, story time, and music notes. Kick, youth, UMW, and Sunday school classes are also meeting online. Check out St. Andrew's webpage for contact information or to contact the church office. And speaking of worship, we need your help. We are looking for folks to read scripture, offer a prayer, share a children's message, pass the peace, give announcements, and welcome people to worship. We've got recording guidelines to send to you, no fancy equipment required, just a smartphone. If you'd like to help, please contact Pastor Sherry, or Pastor Sherry, or Sarah. Look forward to meeting you and seeing your face on the big screen. And looking ahead, we'll celebrate our high school seniors on June 7th, and on June 14th, begin a new summer series on the essentials, a prolonged look at the Christian journey based on Jesus' instructions to the disciples in Matthew 10. Hope you'll join us. And speaking of graduates, please contact the church office by next Tuesday, June 2nd, if, someone, if you or someone in your family is a college graduate, community, four-year, graduate, or postgraduate studies. We need a picture, preferably in your regalia, along with information about where you've been, where you're headed. Thanks! And leadership staff and lay are currently meeting to address the reopening of the building and a return to in-person meeting and worship. Updates will be given as an input gathered as we move faithfully and carefully forward. Office and offerings. The church office is open 10 to 2, Monday through Thursday. Thank you for your continued financial support of St. Andrew's mission and ministry. Online, mail, text, or drop off. St. Andrew's website has more information on logistics. Please and thanks. When I press the go button, you. when I press the go button, we go. Speak, I, I press the go button. Peace be with you. Jane says, peace be with you. Wait, don't do it, Jane. One, two, three. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Don't get
I'm just all out of energy. I need to do something to get charged up. I just don't have any get up and go or energy. Oh, Miss Pat, don't you know? You're already charged up because you're filled with the Holy Spirit. That spirit never goes away. It keeps you full of energy and excited to praise God all the time. Really? Yes. So what do I do to get filled with the Holy Spirit? You have to share your gifts with others. The Spirit's given us all different gifts. Like Pastor Sherry, she has the gift of gab, so she preaches to us. And that shares the Spirit and the battery with everybody and keeps everybody recharged. You have to share your gift with other people. Okay, I can do that. I'm sure you can. And you know what? It is so much fun when we get to remember how much the Spirit has filled our lives and what He's done for us, and we can celebrate that on Pentecost every year. Awesome. Do you want to help me celebrate tonight? I do. I do. Oh, let me show you what I have. We've got Pentecostal cupcakes. Cupcakes to celebrate. So we say happy birthday to the Holy Spirit spreading its gifts among all his people. And happy birthday to the church to celebrate and remember all that the Spirit does for us. Awesome. I think I'm charged up now. Well, let's have a prayer before we okay. eat our cupcakes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For sending the Holy Spirit. For sending the Holy Spirit. To keep us charged up. To keep us charged up. So we can praise and worship you. So we can praise and worship you. And thank you, God. And thank you, God. For the times we can celebrate. And for the times we can celebrate. And eat yummy cupcakes. And eat yummy cupcakes. As we remember. As we remember. All that you do for us. All that you do for us. Amen. Amen. See you guys later. We're going to go enjoy our cupcakes now. Bye. As you know, St. Andrews is a praying church, and now it's time to talk about our prayer request. On this Pentecost Sunday, we remember the birth of the church, those called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We also remember the saints who have completed the race and now rest from their labors. May their light continue to shine on in and through us. Members of our St. Andrews family and friends beyond who are facing health issues. Members of St. Andrews family and friends who have recently lost loved ones. Friends and family who reside in assisted living and nursing facilities who remain apart from us and those who care for them. Teachers, assistants, administrators, and staff who ensure that life lessons and encouragement are shared in equal measure with reading, writing, and arithmetic. And to our graduates and students, we love you and you've got this. Happy summer for some and happy almost summer for others. Those on the front lines, in, on the medical front lines, the healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, facility staff, allied health professionals, researchers, and their families, leaders in church, government, business throughout our community, country, and the world, may the kingdom be always be your guide. First responders and essential workers, safety for them and gratefulness for us. Those whose lives have been turned upside down by the pandemic those whose economic fortunes is uncertain, those battling substance abuse, those who live within patterns of domestic abuse, immigrants, those in prison, those living on the street. May we remember that there are many for whom there is little safety net. And for the ministry offered by St. Andrew's staff, lay leadership, partner ministries, and our other sister churches of the UMC family and beyond, may we continue to be the salt and light living water and bread of heaven. Dear friends, queridos amigos, let's pray. Vamos a orar. Jesus, joy of heaven and earth, we are blessed to celebrate the birthday of your church. 
because you came to live in us and in each one of us on Pentecost. Jesus, Jesus, alegría del cielo y de la tierra. Somos bendecidos al celebrar el cumpleaños de tu iglesia, pues viniste a vivir en cada uno de nosotros en Pentecostés. Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire our worship. We are grateful for your presence. Ven, Espíritu Santo, e inspira nuestra adoración. Estamos agradecidos por tu presencia. Jesus, joy of the people who adore you. We have died to sin, and we are alive to serve you in compassion to others. Jesús, alegría del pueblo que te adora. Hemos muerto al pecado y estamos vivos para servirte en compasión a los demás. Come, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in our homes as we worship you, celebrating your arrival in our hearts and lives. Ven, Espíritu Santo, te damos la bienvenida en nuestra adoración y celebramos tu llegada en nuestros corazones y mentes. Jesus, grace revealed in the Spirit, come breathe in us on this day of Pentecost. Revive our conscience with dedication to you. Jesus, gracia revelada en el Espíritu, ven respirar en nosotros en este día de Pentecostés. Reanima nuestra conciencia con dedicación a ti. Come, Holy Spirit. You are our special guest. Inspire us and make it camp in our journey. Ven, Santo Espíritu. Eres nuestro invitado especial. Inspíranos y acampa en nuestra jornada. Jesus, breath of life. Restore those affected by the pandemic that plagues this world. And help us bless those who are within our reach with your unexhaustible love. Jesús, aliento de vida, restaura a los afectados por la pandemia que azota este mundo y ayúdanos a bendecir a quienes están a nuestro alcance con tu amor inagotable. Come, Holy Spirit, and strengthen us in faith, unite us in love, and anoint us in your power so that we can comfort those Who suffer. Ven, Espíritu Santo, y fortalecenos en la fe. Únenos en el amor y úngenos con tu poder para que podamos consolar a los que sufren. Jesus, power over the wind and fire. We celebrate today the dwelling place of your Holy Spirit in those who believe in your transforming work in our lives. Jesús, poder sobre el viento y el fuego. Celebramos hoy la morada de tu Espíritu Santo en los que creen en tu obra transformadora en nuestras vidas. Come, Holy Spirit, clean our minds and hearts. Enlighten us with your grace in our daily struggle. Ven, Espíritu Santo, limpia nuestras mentes y corazones. Ilumínanos con tu gracia en nuestro diario vivir. Jesus, hope of liberation. Heal the sick in our community, especially those who suffer from uncurable ailments. Have compassion for them. Jesús, esperanza de liberación, sana a los enfermos, especialmente a los que sufren dolencias incurables. Ten compasión de ellos. Come, Holy Spirit. Breathe. In us, the fresh, divine breath, allow us to be filled with your presence, with deeper love and renewed joy. Ven, Espíritu Santo, respira en nosotros el fresco aliento divino. Permítanos estar llenos de tu presencia, con tu amor profundo y alegría renovada. Jesus, breath of life, we pray for the unemployed. Those who have no resources to cover their expenses. Give them peace and perseverance. Jesus, pan de vida. Rogamos por los desempleados. 
los que no tienen recursos para cubrir sus gastos, los despejados, a darles paz y perseverancia. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. We pray for the leadership of our congregation and all those who accompany us in our journey of faith. Jesús, camino, verdad y vida. Oramos por el liderazgo de nuestra congregación y todos los que nos acompañan en nuestra jornada de fe. Come, Holy Spirit, make your light shine on us where there is darkness. Let there be peace where there is uncertainty and trust where there is sadness and fear. Ven, Santo Espíritu, haz que tu luz brille en nosotros donde hay oscuridad. Que haya paz donde hay lucha y confianza, donde hay tristeza y ansiedad. Jesús, divine authority, the arrival of your Holy Spirit changed the lives of the disciples with the burning fire that refines and renews. Help us grow in our journey and commitment to you. Jesús, autoridad divina. La llegada de tu Santo Espíritu cambió la vida de los discípulos con el fuego ardiente que refina y renueva. Haznos crecer en nuestra jornada y compromiso contigo. Come, Holy Spirit. Renew our vision to enlighten your kingdom through our witness to be your church people. Ven, Espíritu Santo. Renueva nuestra visión para resaltar tu reino por medio de nuestro testimonio para que seamos tu iglesia, pueblo. Jesus, Rabbi, the Master, help us to be prepared for the changes that we are going to incur when reopening the facilities of St. Andrews. Jesus, Rabino, Maestro, ayúdanos a estar preparados para los cambios que vamos a incurrir al reabrir las facilidades de San Andros. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught all his followers to pray in the language of your choice, saying, Oramos en el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, quien enseñó a todos sus seguidores a orar en el idioma de tu predilección, diciendo, Friends, this past week has been a difficult one for our community and nation. Tomorrow, June 1st, Charlotte will be gathering for an interfaith vigil of lament and mourning, beginning at 12 noon, in which you are invited to participate. We lament that we have surpassed 100,000 deaths related to the COVID-19 virus. We lament the death of George Floyd. We lament the systemic injustice that has contributed to these losses and our individual contribution to them. We confess and lament 
that we have not loved God with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done God's will. We have broken God's law, and we have rebelled against God's love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. We ask for prayers of forgiveness and freedom for joyful obedience, always through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, we are going to engage in an extended period of silent prayer. I ask during that time for you to express your laments, your confessions, your hopes, and that you might listen to where and to whom God is calling you. Lord, in your mercy, on this day of Pentecost, hear our prayers. Thank you. 
the verses, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. What I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God is various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are all in action everywhere. But God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. Wise counsel, the understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, <coughs> distinguishing between spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one by the Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. Greetings. In the name of God's Spirit, who is pouring out among us on God's church to be God's people in the world. My name is Heidi Miller. And it is so good to be with you today. I wish we were together in person, um, most of all, so I could get to know you face to face. I teach at Pfeiffer University and also direct the Masters in Practical Theology, and it is a joy to be with you. The title of this sermon is Moving from Taking Breath to Giving Breath. Moving from Taking Breath to giving breath. How will we, how do we join with God's spirit who gives breath? We are marking Pentecost, 50 days since Easter, the time in which God pours out God's spirit. Jesus ascends and gives the gift of God's spirit to the disciples and those gathered there in Jerusalem as we see an encounter in Acts 2. Now the Spirit's presence, the Spirit's movement, we encounter all the way in Genesis, in Genesis 2. The Spirit breathes in to humanity's nostrils, life, breathing in life, animating us. So as we begin, I'm going to have us do a breath prayer. Breathing in the love of God and breathing out what we carry. <sighs> breathing in the love of God and breathing out what binds us or grieves us. So take a little bit of time to simply breathe, breathe with me in prayer. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out what you're carrying. Amen. So the Spirit is introduced all the way in Genesis 1. In Genesis 1, we encounter God's Spirit in the midst of void, nothingness, chaos. And the Spirit, the Ruah of God, is brooding over the chaos. So in this space, where it seems that God's address is least likely to occur, there's God's spirit brooding over the chaos, brooding over the chaos, moving and at work over the chaos. God in the midst of chaos, God's spirit, this has been a chaotic, horrific week. 100,000 deaths of COVID. We hit that mark here in the United States this week. 
The New York Times last week posted names of nearly 100,000 who died of COVID. And they, in that posting of names, uh, said a little description about each. If we read that aloud, it would take us nine days, 24 hours, nine days to read 100,000 names. It's been a hard week where breath has been taken. It's been a hard week. It's been a painful week. George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota, an African-American man who was pinned down with a knee by a police officer for five minutes saying he could not breathe. His breath was taken away. A quote from the mayor of Minneapolis, being a black in America should not be a death sentence. It's been a chaotic week. Spirit of God, how do you hover over this chaos? How do you come over this chaos? as breath is being taken away. And as if that wasn't enough in the midst of this, as the crying out and the pain of our black brothers and sisters and brown skinned crying out as we see protests, we recognize how much divisiveness there is in our culture. And even a mask symbolizes the divisiveness, even though the mask is meant to give breath to all, to make it possible that more might live so that our spewing of our breath, as we know from our sisters and brothers who are doctors, nurses, and scientists who say this helps reduce spread, protecting my neighbor, protecting you, this has become divisive, and yet this is part of our call to be moving from taking breath to giving breath. In ancient times, when somebody died, in Roman times and even earlier from Greek mythology, but this was deep and stewed in the day, when someone died, people would try to be present as somebody took their last breath and to catch the last breath that somebody had. So a family member, the closest family member, would hover over and try to catch their last breath so they'd catch the soul of the person as it was leaving the body. And it was the sense in which we'd catch that soul and hold on to the soul of the person. And then a coin was placed in their mouth. And the coin placed in the mouth of the person was meant to pay their passage way into the beyond to pay their way on the ferry towards beyond. So taking breath at that time, but Christians shifted this. That coin in the mouth was called the viaticum. Some of you know that from Roman Catholicism, or that may sound familiar, but via, via, the way or the payment of passage on the way, the viaticum is the last rites or the last supper or Eucharist prior to somebody dying. And Christians placed the body of Christ, the symbol and the marking and the gift of the body of Christ in the mouth of the person. That is life. This broken body of Christ giving life. So instead of taking breath, this broken body gives breath. Moving from taking breath to giving breath and then the gift of Christ pouring out Christ's spirit, receiving life. How do we move from being a taker of breath to a breath giver? 
How do we join with the breath giving of God's spirit? Listen in Acts 1.8. Jesus' words to the disciples prior to his ascension. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This is the spread of breath and life-giving. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. What are we going to spread? Loving our neighbor? Loving our brown, black, white, all? Listen again in 1 Corinthians, also in our scripture this week. 1 Corinthians 12, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. This call to be breath givers, life givers. Ruby Sales is a prophet, a public theologian who is a veteran of civil rights, and she calls us to be breath givers. She was given and gives breath. At the age of 17, as she was part of the civil rights movement in Alabama, a young white seminarian, Jonathan Daniels, threw his body in the way of a bullet directed at her as a brown-skinned. He died instantly. Eventually, Ruby dedicated her life to not only civil rights, but being a breath giver and has formed a nonprofit in his name called the Spirit House Project. Ruby calls us into a deeper question, a healing question, a question of back behind asking, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? How have we listened to one another to ask, where does it hurt? Michael Waters, also a prophet, calls us in our breath-giving life to say, when we see children who are brown-skinned as our own, he said, then the tides will begin to turn. And so, church, I leave the words of these two prophets with you as God's spirit is being poured out. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Friends, God's spirit is pouring out. The same spirit who breathes life pours out on us to be God's presence in the world, empowering, enlivening. Listening and advocating, let us see all children as our children, as we breathe God's spirit into this world. Join with me, breathing again, taking breath and giving breath. <sighs> so be it.
we've come to that time in the service when we are invited to respond to the word read, sung, prayed, and proclaimed. As we consider all that God has given to us, we give thanks for the ability to return our gifts, tithes, and offerings, for the ability to serve, for the witness we share, and for this moment to gather in worship. We give thanks. Let us pray. Oh, dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, you have truly blessed us, and for that we are so grateful. During these difficult times, you have blessed us with a wonderful, caring staff who have used their remarkable talent in conducting worship services, Bible studies, music notes, and other meetings all online. They have turned a negative situation into a positive, enabling St. Andrews to re reach additional people for Christ. On this Pentecost Sunday, please accept our tithes and our offerings and use them and use us to share the love of Jesus with all we come in contact with. We ask these things in your precious and your worthy name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Friends, again, we thank you for the opportunity to have worshiped with you this morning here at St. Andrews. As we part from one another on this Pentecost Sunday, I offer you this prayer, these words of blessing. Holy God, thank you. Thank you for sending your spirit, the spirit of the risen Christ from heaven. Help us to be like the early disciples, praying patiently as we wait for your guidance and your power. Fill our hearts and minds with your gifts of faith and hope and love. May our conversations with people of every language and culture around us witness to your grace and your mercy. We dedicate ourselves, we dedicate this time we have spent together, we dedicate all of our offerings that we have made to your good purposes in the world through our church's mission by the power of your spirit. This we pray in Jesus' name and all those gathered said, Amen. Friends, go in peace, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in my heart. Of every man who thinks of me, Christ in my mouth. Of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me.